This video is brought to you by my ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. The link is in the description. This guy had a question and he said, Harry, I need your expertise. I went on a first date with a girl and it was great for the most part. A few things I picked up. Number one, she was open and said she has the worst FOMO or fear of missing out. Number two, I leaned in for the kiss and she rejected me. She was also open about that and explained that she wants to take it slow because in her past experience, when she would kiss a guy on the first date, it went nowhere. Now, two questions. Number one, is she a red flag for admitting she has the worst FOMO? And number two, if I lean in for the kiss on the second date and she still rejects me, should I drop her? I really don't want to be led on. What are your thoughts and opinions? So that was the first question I got. And then I got a similar style question under a video I did called Five Pitfalls of Respecting Her Boundaries. And this person said, hey, Harry, I revisited this video in particular to rewatch your response to a question that I had. Uh, and fast forward to today, you've never been so right. I went on a date last night and the girl basically told me she wanted to hold off on kissing. No mention of hooking up due to her past experiences. I was butthurt at first until I recalled some of my recent experiences where I, when I did stuff on the first date, found out things I wish I knew before and regretted it. After a few moments, I cooled off and continued the date. Needless to say, there will be a second date. Just wanted to share this real quick. So um, I, I believe these are the two of the same. They may not be, but either way, uh, how, in terms of what the second guy said, in, I decided to watch back on that video. In that video, I was talking about how um, you know men find it very unfair where a woman will say things like, oh, I hooked up a lot in my past, or I made out with a guy in my past, and so now I'm trying to take things slower, and we take it personally because we're like, well, that's not fair that those other guys got that. Why can't I get it? But uh, it, uh, to this guy's point, if you really think about some of your prior experiences in dating, you've probably experienced where you did stuff with with a woman maybe a little too soon and it resulted in there being distrust there or bad things happening or things not going the way you wanted them to go, right? You know, so I remember early in my dating years, for example, I went on a date with a girl. We went out like by the, by the first date we were making out and by the second date we were hooking up, right? And so we dated for about eight or nine months and she was just very apprehensive about things and she wasn't always trusting of the process of what was going on. And so after we broke up, the next woman that came along, I said, you know what? I've had these experiences now where I've hooked up a little too early with women and maybe that is playing into why these relationships aren't working out. So for this new girl that I'm dating that we've gone out on a couple of dates, she's clearly into me. I'm going to actually withhold intimacy until I feel that we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. And with that particular woman, it took two months before I decided, you know what? I think I'm actually down to do some stuff, at which point we did some stuff. But she was already ready to go after like the second or third date. I was the one that held out because based on previous experiences, I figured, you know what? Maybe I need to change up my tactic. So I'll get different results because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting you're going to get different. And so women go through that also. Women go through, hey, there are women that go through like that that rebellious stage or that stage where, you know, the age is like 18 to 21. They're just like, oh, I'm free. I'm in, I'm in college. I'm away from my parents. I can do what I want. I can hook up with whoever. I can do whatever. And then after like a couple of years of that, they're like, this, I, I, I have all these bodies now, but I'm not feeling good about myself. And none of those experiences resulted in me having a long-term relationship. So you know what? I'm going to learn from that behavior and I'm going to change up tactics. And then so unfortunately, you may be the guy that she's testing this out with for the first time. And the worst thing you can do to a woman that's trying to potentially better herself or trying to let you know that she wants to experience things differently in the hopes that it will go better is to punish her for it. Now, there are guys that say, but Harry, if it was a chatter Tyrone that looked really good, she wouldn't be imposing those rules. And I get tired of that rhetoric because, yes, that is what is posted on social media. But at large, we're all ultimately dating and we're learning things about ourselves and what our process is going to be. Again, I don't fault nobody for wanting to change that up, you know. And so I say if you're a guy that's going to feel some kind of way about that, there's nothing that says you have to date women that are going to give you this spiel. Like you don't have to, you know, but in reference to the guy that wrote me specifically, I will say this. So to your first question, is she a red flag for admitting FOMO? 
there's always a level of that going on. Like even if you're in a long standing committed relationship and you guys immensely love each other, a part of your brain is going to probably see like some hot chick on the street and be like, but I wonder if I could make it work with her. Like that's just, our, our brains are gonna be naturally inclined to be like, but what else could have happened? We just learned over time, especially as a guy, you should be learning to hedge your bets. If you're dating a woman that's giving you like all the things you want and is nice and accordant to people and you barely fight with her, but like maybe she has a couple of things here and there missing, you gotta ask yourself, if another woman comes along, what are the, what are the odds that she's gonna have everything your current girl has and more? I have discovered more likely than not, it's not going to happen. So you got a decision to make. And so women have a decision to make too. And some of them, they're going to be, they might tell you like, oh yeah, I have a fear of missing out. But again, a lot of times when women are talking to men, they're not aware that them sharing an emotion they're having is going to be taking, taken so seriously by the guy they're in front of, you know? And so I understand as a guy, why like you would think if she says she has a fear of missing out, oh my God, how's that correlate with the future? Women are just telling you emotions that they're feeling in the moment, and they're not thinking it's going to have any serious consequences. This is not her trying to tell you telepathically, I'm going to potentially cheat on you in the future. So just, just take it as she was expressing an emotion. It's not currently going anywhere. We, we look for stuff like that when there starts to be actual evidence of, oh, the woman's stepping out. Oh, she's suddenly flaking on dates or she's showing up late, or she's saying, oh, she's hiding her phone from you when she's around you. Those are more telltale signs that she's potentially a cheater. Her expressing fear of missing out, most people have that. But to the second question, so this is a, this is key, right? He says, he asked if I lean in for the kiss on the second date. So here's what you're not going to do. What you're not going to do is go in for a kiss on that second date. And I, I'm telling you this from personal experience, because uh, there was a time where I went out with a woman and we had like a night of it. Like uh, I met her through one of my aunts. She was a coworker of my aunt, but she was like a younger person. So like, I think at the time I was 20 something and she was 20 something. And so we were talking to each other. We were seeing each other. But when on that first time out, we went out, this was in Vegas. So we went out, did some cool stuff in Vegas, had a great time at the end of the night. Uh, I drove her back to her, her uh, house where she was living with her grandma at the time. Right. And before I walked to the door, I lean in and I give her a kiss on the lips and she does not reject the kiss. I get intel from my aunt later though, that even though she, she felt weird not telling this to me because we had had such a great time on the date and she really did like have the hots for me and really found me attractive. But she said, my aunt said that, yeah, I talked to her, you know, how the date was and whatever. And she said, oh, it was cool. But like, I felt kind of weird kissing him on that first date. Cause I didn't, even though it was cool hanging out with him, I didn't really know him like that. And so I just took that intel and said, Hey, you know what? I'm not going to be butthurt by it. I'm going to just take that information and know, okay, she's not comfortable with the kiss yet. So all I can do is ask for the next date. I can ask for the next date. And if she says yes to it, and that means there was enough of a comfort level to where she wants to still call this a date, meaning there's still buildings towards a romantic thing, but just maybe for right now, she's not comfortable with the kiss. Fine. It is what it is. And so I asked her out for another time. Went on a date, had a good time. I think at one point she brought up the kiss like, hey, so just, you know, I, I don't want you to think that, you know, there was anything wrong you did or this is net. I said, hey, no, you know what it is? It is it is what it is. Like, I, I still think we're having a good time. And hey, and I this is why I developed my standard line of I'm just trying to get to know you in whatever capacity that means. If we're doing physical stuff, fantastic. If it takes time to get there, also fantastic. I just want to get to know you. And so it took her until about the fourth date when we were driving back from someplace and she literally said to me, Hey, real quick, Harry, pull over to the side of the road. I said, okay. And I pulled over to the side of the road and then she turned to me and gave me like the biggest kiss you could possibly imagine. And it's funny because I think back to the story my mom told me about her and my dad dating, whereby on those first couple of dates, like the first date, it was her and her, her best friend who was my dad's cousin. And they all had a meal at my dad's apartment. So she wasn't by herself in my dad's apartment. And they went on like two or three other dates. And it was the fourth date where she initiated the kiss, right? So just because he wasn't getting kisses on those first three dates, it doesn't mean that she wasn't building an interest towards him. It just meant that she needed a little bit of time to open up. To, to really see that, oh, this is a guy I could actually see going long term before she decided to open herself up to physical contact. All right. And so I stress this because there's this overarching lie that men had bought into that if a woman doesn't at any time on that first or second date want to kiss him or hook up with him, that they have no chance and that this girl's playing with him and is never going to fall for him. And I've just found that to fundamentally not be true because at the end of the day, 
you got to recognize where her comfort level is at. It is very, very important. Most of the time, as guys, we're honestly ready for that first kiss by the first date, maybe the second date. And I tell you guys on this channel, try to go for that kiss by the second date, right? And so just because you go for the kiss doesn't always mean that the woman's going to be ready for it. And you have to be prepared for you as the bold guy going for that kiss. You may not always get it when you want to. And to, to the other commenter's point, you got to not be butthurt by that. Just be like, hey, you know what? Hey, it is what it is. It's fine. Totally cool. And then get back to the date at hand, right? Now, here's the other thing, though. The reason I, I stress this also is because I think it's equally important for you as a guy to still make the move. Because to the point, to, to my original story where I went for the kiss, I got the kiss, and then the girl said, well, I wasn't quite ready for it or whatever, right? But she still knew that I had the attraction level for her to want a kiss and a woman knowing that you as the guy want to kiss her is very important because it's better than the opposite of that which is her not thinking that you have any kind of attraction to her at all and i'm actually gonna be doing a show at some point in the future talking about the whole idea of women wanting to be desired and wanting to be seen as sexual objects and stuff like that but suffice to say yes a woman still needs to know on some level that you're going to, that you find her desirable because let's say you go in for the kiss and she says she's not ready for it. Okay, fine. Again, you're not going to try to be like on the second date and third date going for a kiss. She are, you've already put out there that you find her attractive enough to want to do a kiss. So she knows that that desire is there. So that way, when she is ready for that kiss to happen, a part of her is going to be like, oh, I want him to kiss me. Wait, wait, wait. You did do that thing where he tried to go for a kiss and he got rejected. So maybe you need to go to him and show him that you actually want to kiss. And this time, the woman's not going to be in her head thinking, but I don't want to make the first move and I'm kind of apprehensive. And what if he doesn't want it? Because you already went for the move. So now she knows when she's ready, she can just go in and start making out and she's know that you're going to already be a willing participant. So there's no downside ultimately to going for the kiss other than your ego might be a little bit bruised because you don't get to kiss her at the time that you want to. But even just making the move, she already has tele telepathically been put out there that you want her in that capacity. And so when she is ready for it, she knows there's going to be no hesitation on your part, which is always a good thing. So yeah, ultimately, don't get butt hurt if at the moment a woman's changing her mind or is, is not accepting your kiss in the moment. Don't assume, guys, that that automatically means she's not interested or she's got another chat of Tyrone in the background. Like, I get so tired of hearing that crap when fundamentally it's not true. Like, I, I think... Because men have this idea that just all women have all these chats and Tyrones always hitting them up in their DMs and they're always being able to accept them, that they think that it's just an automatic wash if a woman's not automatically giving them right away the kind of physical contact that they want. And I've just learned in my journey that as many women as you think are getting all these DMs, they are not. And even if they are, they're not getting hit up by the guys that they actually want. So they could easily be in a dry spell. Like a woman could have all these guys in her DMs that she's just like, not feeling him, not feeling him, not feeling him. And so, yeah, she could still be sitting there like, if this guy would just act right, I would do this stuff, but he's not acting right. So just consider that as you go forward in your dating journey. Follow-up question to that is he says, she showed a lot of appreciation after the date via text. I responded and didn't imply another date. Uh, I should wait until Saturday to hit her up again, correct? Well, you know, my mantra typically is I don't try to talk to women that I'm not, that I'm just dating. I typically don't do, I don't do Friday and Saturday dates and I don't do reach outs on Fridays or Saturdays. I keep my contacts and my dates for Sundays through Thursdays. I found that's, honestly, I learned that from Doc Love, rest in peace, a long time ago. And for whatever reason, I find that that, that has worked immensely great, you know? But I've also learned a, a, over my time that we think that we need to be in contact ASAP with women or that we need to ask them for a date right away. And I've just found that that is fundamentally not true. I remember, I, I think I've talked about this on the show before, but like I met a woman one time at a cancer walk for my friend and during the course of the walk, we talked, we got along together. And at the end of it, I asked for a number. I waited a month and a half to reach out to her for a date. And it did not deter her from wanting to go out. So you had a great date. You had a good time. Fantastic. Let her sit with that. Hey, what's today? Today's Thursday. Okay. You could realistically wait until Sunday to ask her for another date. And if she has high interest, she will say yes. Now, what will also happen is during that time, if she's still feeling attracted to you, she will also probably reach out just to say, hey, or send a meme or some other crap like that, right? So, but either way, the point is the fact that uh, she showed a lot of appreciation 
after the date via text, I'm going to assume that she reached out to you after the date first for that text. I'm hoping that that's what happened. I hope you didn't reach out and say, I got home safe. Hope you had a great time. Hopefully she reached out to you. I don't know. But either way, the fact that she was showing appreciation, that's her way of, of covering her bases because she knows on a, on a conscious level that her rejecting your kiss could make you feel a certain way. And so her responding and saying, hey, just want you to know I had a great time. That's her saying, please, please, please don't take the fact that I didn't say yes to the kiss, make you think that I didn't like you. I probably want to go out with you again. And so great. You didn't ask her for another date. You did the right move by not asking her in that moment. Sit on it for a little bit. I'd say wait till Sunday to ask her out. But hey, if you feel as though Saturday's better, because I don't know when this date happened that you were talking about. Um, if it happened like, say, Monday or Tuesday, maybe Saturday, but you could really wait till Sunday. You know, because again, women that, that are building interest in you and have high interest and want to go out with you, they're not going anywhere. And I know as guys, we think, but I got to ask right away or she's going to forget about me or go out some other chat of Tyrone. And I, again, have just found in my dating experience, I've had women wait months for me, weeks for me, years for me. And when I hit them up, they were ready. So don't think that your timetable has to be so quick. Like Sunday is only like two more days in the grand scheme of things. Cause I, I try to give guys perspective like this. If you're with a woman for 30, 40, 50 years, right? That's a long stretch of time. Three days is like barely this much. It's barely like a, a speck on my finger, right? So you got to look at the, the longer perspective of this. And, and, and in terms of you dating this woman, if she gets annoyed after three days that you didn't contact her, that's you're, you're, you're finding out early on the level of patience she has and you've done yourself a favor. But I'd say wait. But again, you got to do you go to your scenario better than I do. So you got to check that out.